the rule over us. Let us honor the aged among us. Let us train up the young men in the fear of God. Let us direct our wives to that which is good. Let them exhibit the lovely habit of purity. Let them show forth the sincere disposition of meekness. Let them make manifest the command which they have of their tongue by their manner of speaking. Let them display their love not by preferring one to another, but by showing equal affection to all that piously fear God. Let your children be partakers of true Christian training. Let them learn of how great avail humility is with God, how much the spirit of pure affection can prevail with Him, how excellent and great His fear is, and how it saves all those who walk in it with a pure mind. For He is a searcher of the thoughts and desires of the heart. His breath is in us, and when He pleases, he will take it away. Now, the faith which is in Christ confirms all these admonitions, for he himself by the Holy Ghost thus addresses us. Come, you children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desires life and loves to see good days? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears to their prayers. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cried, and the Lord heard him, and delivered him out of all his troubles. Many are the stripes appointed for the wicked, but mercy shall compass those about who hope in the Lord. The all-merciful and beneficent Father has bowels of compassion towards those who fear Him, and kindly and lovingly bestows His favors upon those who come to Him with a simple mind. So let us not be double-minded, neither let our soul be lifted up on account of His exceedingly great and glorious gifts. Far from us be that which is written, Wretched are they who are of a double mind and of a doubting heart, who say, oh, These things we have heard even in the times of our fathers, but behold, we have grown old, and none of them have happened to us. You foolish ones! Compare yourselves to a tree. Uh, take the vine. First of all it sheds its leaves, then it buds, next it puts forth leaves, and then it flowers. After that comes the sour grape, and then follows the ripe fruit. You perceive how in a little time the fruit of a tree comes to maturity. Of a truth, soon and suddenly shall his will be accomplished, as the scripture also bears witness, saying, Speedily will he come, and will not tarry. And, The Lord shall suddenly come to his temple, even the Holy One for whom you look. Let us consider, beloved, how the Lord continually proves to us that there shall be a future resurrection, of which he has rendered the Lord Jesus Christ the first fruits by raising him from the dead. Let us contemplate, beloved, the resurrection which is at all times taking place. Day and night declare to us a resurrection. The night sinks to sleep, and the day arises. The day departs, and the night comes on. Let us behold the fruits of the earth, how the sowing of grain takes place. The sower goes forth and casts it into the ground, and the seed, being thus scattered, though dry and naked when it fell upon the earth, is gradually dissolved. Then, out of its dissolution, the mighty power of the providence of the Lord raises it up again, and from one seed many arise and bring forth fruit. 
Let us consider that wonderful sign which takes place in eastern lands, that is, in Arabia and the countries round about. There is a certain bird which is called a phoenix. This is the only one of its kind, and lives five hundred years. And when the time of its dissolution draws near that it must die, it builds itself a nest of frankincense and myrrh and other spices, into which, when the time is fulfilled, it enters and dies. But as the flesh decays, a certain kind of worm is produced, which, being nourished by the juices of the dead bird, brings forth feathers. Then, when it has acquired strength, it takes up that nest in which are the bones of its parent, and bearing these it passes from the land of Arabia into Egypt, to the city called Heliopolis. And in open day, flying in the sight of all men, it places them on the altar of the sun, and having done this hastens back to its former abode. The priests then inspect the registers of the dates, and find that it has returned exactly as the five hundredth year was completed. Do we then deem it any great and wonderful thing for the Maker of all things to raise up again those who have piously served Him in the assurance of a good faith, when even by a bird He shows us the mightiness of His power to fulfill His promise? For the Scripture says in a certain place, You shall raise me up, and I shall confess to you. And again, I laid down and slept. I awaked because you are with me. And again, Job says, You shall raise up this flesh of mine, which has suffered all these things. Having then this hope, let our souls be bound to him who is faithful in his promises and just in his judgments. He who has commanded us not to lie shall much more himself not lie. For nothing is impossible with God except to lie. Let his faith, therefore, be stirred up again within us, and let us consider that all things are nigh unto him. By the word of his might he established all things, and by his word he can overthrow them. Who shall say to him, What have you done? Or who shall resist the power of his strength? When and as he pleases, he will do all things, and none of the things determined by him shall pass away. All things are open before him, and nothing can be hidden from his counsel. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day to day utters speech, and night to night shows knowledge, and there are no words or speeches of which the voices are not heard. Since then all things are seen and heard by God, let us fear him, and forsake those wicked